Hey, uh, it's been a while, but I'm back today uh, to talk about specifically the book Winger, but more generally just the idea of violence in young adult literature. I will be spoiling Winger, and I do have a point that I want to talk about that does have to do with The Fault in Our Stars. This is the first book that I've come across that I can, you know, actively remember that has such a high degree of violence in it and that I felt was handled very poorly. I loved this book. If you watch my wrap up, you know that I loved it. I talked very highly of it. 4.5 out of 5 stars for me, but that last half star is because of how much I disliked the violence and the way that it was handled in this particular story. This book would be perfect in my opinion if it didn't have the violence in it. It was just dumb. It felt like such an afterthought. Like Andrew Smith was like, I need this book to have some edge to it. it was like, I know, let's stab a guy and then kill a guy. Like that, it, that's just what it feels like. It's stuck in such a random place, both pieces, and the juxtaposition of it to the events that it's next to is just ridiculous that I, it just feels like such an afterthought. Kevin being stabbed was, is the first big plot twist. It makes sense that it was kind of like a spur of the moment thing, but the aftermath where it was kind of like, yeah, like the coach went with him into the hospital and we all sat and like were quiet and everything was normal. The next day he wore a sling. That was kind of all we got out of it. This event that like should be really serious and like should really affect the team. I mean, one of your members got stabbed because of another member. There's no weight to the to this event. It should really matter and it should be brought up again and like a guy was stabbed because his teammate was gay and like it just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Like it doesn't <sighs> Like, it, it was just so irresponsible. Like, be, I just can't even fathom it, how irresponsible it is. And if we talk about how irresponsible the death of Joey is and how horribly that was handled, that's even worse. From the time that Joey is, you know, a found dead to the end of the book is 10 pages. 10. That's it. So you have 10 pages to grieve the death of a character that you have loved the whole rest of the book, who has been such a good role model for Ryan Dean, who has built a beautiful relationship with him, with Ryan Dean, and ha it's been really enjoyable. As a character, that's disrespectful to just to Joey as a character. A great character like that deserves more than 10 pages. Secondly, it's disrespectful to the entire act, the thought of it, because a guy was beaten to death by two of his classmates because of his sexuality, and you have 10 pages to go over it. I want to compare this to The Fault in Our Stars. Augustus Waters dies, and there are quite a few chapters left after his death. We have the weight of it all. We have the weight of him being gone, the absence of him in everyday life. We go to his funeral, we hear the eulogy, we see Hazel and Isaac both without him. We fully like accept the weight of his loss and of his death because we see him and the absence of him. That's what's so sad about death is the absence of that person and we don't see the absence of Joey. What makes me so upset about it is that Augustus Waters died of cancer. It, it is sad, it is tragic because he was so young, but it didn't come from a, a malicious place. Being beaten to death as Joey was is so malicious and evil and has so much more behind it because of the reason why he was killed. I should have cried harder for Joey because it was so much more tragic and so much more malicious than a teenage boy dying of cancer. I wanted that heaviness to Joey's death because he deserves it and because his cause deserves it. And Augustus Waters got it, and Joey didn't, and there's something wrong with that. And I want us to be aware of that. Violence in books cannot be nonchalant. It cannot be a secondary thought. It cannot be something thrown in at the end. If authors like Andrew Smith are going to include pieces like this in their, their work, it has to have a weight to it. It it has to because it's 
it means so much and you're saying so much by saying so little. I urge you to think more critically about the violence in books that you're reading, especially those that take place in contemporary books because it's such an important discussion.